and that we wouldn't want it any other way. <laughs> we wouldn't want things in anyone's hands but Allah Azza wa Jal because He is the best fit and the most perfect uh, to manage our affairs and plan for us better than we could plan for ourselves in light of His perfect knowledge. Just one ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal says to us in the Qur'an, our Lord says to us, and He is the most truthful of speakers, مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِ قَلْبَهِ وَاللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ In Surah Taghabun, Allah Azza wa Jal says, There is no calamity that ever happens except by permission from Allah, except by permission from Allah the Mighty and Majestic. And whomever believes and whoever believes in Allah, he will guide their heart. He will guide that person's heart. And Allah has full knowledge of all things. You know, the great uh, Tabi Al-Qama, rahimahullah, he said about this verse that no calamity befalls the earth except by permission from Allah. And whomever believes in Allah, Allah guides their heart. He said, this is the believer. This is the depiction of the believer that we should all... Uh, be identified by and work towards if we struggle at uh, being defined as such. He says, this is the believer. Uh, That's what the verse says. He believes in Allah. And so when a calamity hits, he chooses to believe. He renews his faith. says, no, I believe this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is in his hands, ultimately and entirely. He believes in Allah, he knows from Allah, and so he accepts it from Allah, and so Allah guides his heart, guides his heart to be content, guides his heart to be comfortable uh, with the fact that what hit them wasn't going to miss them, and what missed them was never going to hit them, and that nothing will ever strike them except by permission from their Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the greatest treasure uh, that we can come out of uh, this ordeal with, to renew our faith with Allah Azza wa Jal. And so this doesn't mean to be fatalist, of course. It doesn't mean we're going to ignore all the precautionary measures. But at the same time, we don't want to just be cautious about uh, the threat of our bodies being sick. Because if our bodies, our health, our physical life would be compromised, that would only sever us from this world. Which, of course, is a big deal. But relatively speaking, it is nothing compared to our heart getting sick, our heart getting compromised and severing us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the most irreparable harm. You know, Dr. Uh, Saeed al-Kamali, the famous contemporary Moroccan scholar, uh, he says we need to make ourselves comfortable with whatever we cannot change, and we have very good reason to, because Allah knows subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said we ride planes and we ride boats sometimes, uh, and we never know who the pilot is, yet we're comfortable riding those, vehicles were comfortable riding those ships he says and so how can we not live comfortable meaning secure uh when we know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one managing our life so it's just a matter of renewing our knowledge about allah's perfect knowledge renewing our certainty in that whomever believes in allah truly uh allah will guide their heart and we have to keep listening to Allah, listening for the voice of revelation, reciting the Qur'an, reciting what Allah said about himself. Because if we keep listening to the news, we're going to start assuming that they know full well what's happening. And But if we are listening to Allah, Azza wa Jalla, we'll remember that he is the one that knows best. He is the one fully in charge. So what I'm trying to say is it has a lot to do with us and a quarantine of our hearts uh, essentially, that is extremely important uh, because to feel like anyone but Allah is in control is devastating, devastating even for our psyche, devastating for our uh, our ability to be resilient in the face of challenges. You know, one uh, narration in Surah Al-Tirmidhi from one of the tabi'een that, uh, that that always touches me, it, it's from Safwan ibn Sulaym, rahimahullah. He says, مَا نَهَضَ مَلَكٌ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ you know, sometimes you feel paralyzed by the news, all the WhatsApp and otherwise, and you feel like you can't get up, what's to do? Let me just go find some more news. Maybe something else will reassure me. Something else can get me going. It says there is no angel that basically takes off, launches from the earth to the heavens without first saying, 
there is no might nor power except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let that be your chant as well. Let that be uh, what shatters your lethargy, what shatters that feeling of powerlessness, that angst that may crawl up on us. There is no might nor power except by Allah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Let that be your motto. Let that be your chant in all your down times and in all your heavy hearted moments. Let that be the key that unlocks your inner peace in the middle of the storm. Uh, and, and be protective of that. Be protective of what you listen to and how much of it you listen to. Uh, Al-Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, uh, and I'll close with this. Uh, he said he was once sick and a man came to him and said to him, how are you doing today? He said, bi khair, ana fi afiyah. Like, I'm, I'm all right, I, I'm healthy, uh, meaning I'm healthy now. And he said, hamamt al bariha But they told us, or he said, you had a fever yesterday. And so Imam Ahmad, uh, got upset at him and he said to him إِذَا قُلْتُ لَكَ أَنَا فِي عَافِيَةً فَلَا تُخْرِجْنِي مِمَّا أَنَا فِي When I tell you I'm fine do not remove me from that state don't try to remind me that things are bad so be protective really of, of the impressions the, the prints, the stains by people's conversations by people's uh, chatter uh, and what it could have on your heart could have on your spiritual perception could have on your, your confidence in Allah and your certain knowledge, your positive knowledge that he knows perfectly well, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll keep it there. Uh, it is a very short reminder, but it is a huge assignment uh, to close up the valves, to fold the information about how the world functions a little bit, tighten them as compared to how much you open the valves of allowing Allah to introduce himself to you over and over again through his words. And through that very important dhikr, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, that is where we have to start. But some more important reminders and action items, inshallah, uh, in the coming nights uh, about this challenge at hand. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, alleviate us and, and allow us to show him good from ourselves uh, through this fitna, through this trial. Allahumma ameen. Zakallah khayyun, everyone. Have a great night. Subhanakallah. Bihamdik. Shadu ala ilaha illa